Hello and welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk about defining information literacy as well as data information knowledge and wisdom, otherwise referred to as DIKW. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about why I decided to include data knowledge and wisdom alongside our definition of information literacy moving forward throughout the rest of this course. When we think about starting to define this topic of information literacy, and what does it mean for today? Uh, because if you try to examine life even 20, 50, 100, 1,000 years ago, information meant something very different than what we have access to uh, today. So we're going to focus on 21st century to start our definition. Your textbook has the following definition. I have highlighted four different sections, right? Appropriate behavior, uh, whatever channel or medium, well fitted to our needs and wise and ethical use. And if you kind of cross reference those four highlighted sections with the major objectives of this course, uh, you'll find that um, they kind of mat match each other nicely. Um, we are going to focus on, you know, ethical use of technology throughout the course. We're going to talk about behavior. Um, one of the many interesting things with technology in the 21st century is there are so many channels or mediums for us to get access to it, not just physically with when we're talking about an iPad versus a, a cell phone, for example. But uh, once we're online, we have different search engines, different websites, different means to access information. And then certainly part of the research process is to be able to define our information need and then being able to meet that need with whatever access uh, we have at hand. So I want to take this definition from your book and I'm going to add in some stuff from the readings that I had you do on uh, DIKW. And so if we went ahead and tried to define data, data is the smallest uh, block of, of the four here. Symbols, words, numbers, uh, in a more technical term, the actual code we write, a small section of code, um, tables, and then even a database or a database table. And then we kind of build from here, and, and we'll get to the pyramid eventually, which you can see how these things interrelate. We move into information, uh, and so you can see that these things kind of match up. Sentences are made up of symbols or words. Um, equations are made up of numbers and symbols, and, and so on and so forth. Building again, knowledge builds off of information. Sentences make up chapters. Um, numbers and symbols make up theories. And then wisdom. Uh, chapters make up books, and so on and so forth. Now, from your reading, you know that these interact in a pyramid. And a pyramid is a great shape for this because um, I think you could take a look at the world and say, well, there is a ton of data uh, and there's a lot less wisdom. Uh, but what I like about this is being able to define each of the layers by the one below it. So we have data, like I said, it's the smallest level, discrete elements. But then we can think of information in terms of data. And being able to think about this abstractly uh, can help us when we're not dealing with something as simple as, well, sentences are made up of words. So linked data uh, is information. We take different pieces of data and we link them together to create information. We then organize that information to create knowledge and we apply it uh, in a way to create wisdom. After examining the DIKW pyramid, we can come back to our original definition of information literacy and make it a little more flexible and realistic for the different types of data, information, knowledge, and wisdom that we're trying to talk about in the 21st century. And we wind up with something uh, like the bottom paragraph where we can uh, adopt and use appropriate behavior to transform data into linked information, which is organized to meet our knowledge needs uh, so that we can apply it in a way that leads to wisdom ethically uh, in its use in society.